this is a strange idea because it is both new and not new at the same time because just like functions, you've been using inverse functions for a while. You just might not have known that's what they were called. Okay? So let me try and explain what these are. In a triangle, right, we've been doing some trig. And if I give you a question like, oh, I don't know, something like this. Let's go mm, 30 degrees and um, x and 4. Okay. Now, in this triangle, it's really easy to find the unknown. That's what we're always doing when there's a pronumeral equation. You're like, find x. Okay. What equation would I write to find x in this case? Sine. Sine. Okay, pause for a second. How do I know sine is the um, ratio I'm after? Yeah, very good. From this point of view, I go opposite on a hypotenuse. That'll give me the values I'm after. So I'm going to write sine 30, as you suggested, equals x, x, over, x over 4. Good. Over four. <laughs> okay? That's what I meant to say. Okay, now sine 30, you can pop that into your calculator. Or if you're good, you'll know that's an exact value, which is why I picked it. Sine 30, what's it equal to? A half. Very good. So I've got a half equals x on 4. So far, so good. I'll just multiply both sides by 4. And I get an answer. Okay, you're happy with that? Right? Now, this is using, this language here, is using a function. Sine is a function, right? You can put an input in, and you'll get an input out. You put in 30 degrees, you get a half. Input, output, okay? But if I just very subtly change the question, right? If I change it to be this kind of question, you've seen loads of these. Now, it's the same triangle, yes? And I'm taking the same number that you know. So you already know what theta is, what its size is, okay? But how would I solve this question? What would I write? Sine theta. Okay, I'd go sine theta. I'd still start off the same way. And I'm still going to say it's opposite <coughs> on hypotenuse. You okay with that? I know that 2 over 4 is just 1 over 2. It's just the equivalent fraction, right? Now at this point, if you didn't know what the answer was, you would reach for your calculator. And then you would put in, you would press some particular buttons. Which buttons would you press? Aha, uh -huh. you go shift, right? And then you press the sign button. Now, just mark this, right? You'll write theta equals, and this is what you'll punch into your calculator. And this guy here we call sine inverse, right? Sine inverse. You've got functions, and then you've got inverse functions. Sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse. What does an inverse function do? What's its relationship to the original? Right? Yeah, and the answer is it kind of it kind of gets rid of this, right? Like you had a sign here before, and now it's kind of vanished, right? Um, it another way of thinking about it is it undoes whatever sign was doing here. Okay. Now you've got loads of inverse functions. In fact, um, we've got some of these here, right? So for instance, see um, from this line to the next line, right? What did I do to get from line two to line three in this equation here? I multiplied by 4, right? I multiply by 4, or you can cross multiply if you like. Now, multiplying by 4, why do I multiply by 4? What's the usefulness of that? Now, what it will do is we'll get rid of this denominator here, right? Which is great. But to use our language here, right, of functions and inverse functions, dividing by 4, that's a function, right? You put in an input like 40, and you get an output like 10, right? You put an input, you get an output. Division by 4 is a function, and it has an inverse. It has another function that will undo it, right? Instead of dividing by 4, if you multiply by 4, that will get rid of that operation. It will get rid of the function. It's just what sine inverse does, okay? So here's what we're going to do as an example, right? Let's take a function, right? So this is an example of a function, right? Let's take a nice, easy, uh, straight line. Something like, oh, we'll do plus 4. Okay? Now, to undo this function, right, to find the inverse, in fact, I'll even write that. What I want to do is instead of getting an out, taking an input and getting an output, remember I said I want to go in reverse, right? I don't want to put an input and get the output. I want to know, if you know what the output was, can you tell me the input? Does that make sense? I'm trying to go in the other direction. So being that I'm trying to, I'm trying to switch things around, right? 
what, what name have we given the inputs and outputs in this equation? We've just put symbols on them. X and Y, right? That's our input and that's our output. But I want to switch them around. I want to go in the opposite direction. So to find the inverse function, we swap the inputs and outputs. Or, to put it in symbolic terms, we swap the x's and y's. Okay? So, if y equals 3x plus 4 is a function, okay, then to get its inverse, I just switch these guys around, right? So I'm just going to write this in a different color. x equals 3y plus 4. You see, I've just swapped them. Just swapped them. Now, this is fine, but it's a bit messy. We usually like to write our equations in this form. Uh, this is gradient intercept form, right? How do I put this in gradient intercept form? What might I do? Can you make it equal to zero? Yeah, I, well, almost, right? I want to rearrange this, not so it's equal to zero, but so that y is the subject, right? which is very similar, okay? So I'm just going to shuffle this around a little bit. Watch with me. I'll take away four from both sides, okay? By the way, the reason I take away four is because subtracting four is the inverse function of adding four, right? Functions, inverses. Um, I'm only one step away, right? What do I do to make y the subject? Divide by three. Divide by three. I'll do that in one hit and divide over here. So I'm going to get a third x minus four thirds. Okay, now here's why I asked you to get your um, computer up, right? If you've gone there, before we go any further, does that match what you expected? Does that match what you expected? The three tells you it's got a gradient of three, so it's a pretty steep thing, right? And the plus four tells you, what does the plus four tell you? It tells you the y-intercept, right? Which is up there at four. You can just see it there, right? I've got zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is, if, you just, if you're still here, just hit enter, and it'll start a new equation for you. Enter. Now, I've got a choice here. I could write it like this. This has got fractions, that's a bit gross. I'm just gonna write this. They're, they're the same equation. Do you agree? Just written in slightly different forms. Let's write in x equals, through i plus 4, x equals 3, 1, 2, Okay, now what have you got, right? Do you see, I've got two functions, I've got the purple one, well your colours might be a bit different, yours might be blue and red, I've just done a bit more work this morning, so they've given me new colours. I've got the first function in purple, and then I've got the inverse function in orange, do you see that? Okay, just before you run. Let's just try this quickly with another example. And this time we're not even going to do this work. We're just going to go straight here, okay? I want you to take your first equation, right? Uh, take away all the values. Take away all the values. Let's take something like, say, parabolas. We've been spending a lot of time on parabolas, right? So let's draw one. Let's go x. Um, above, the, um, above the number 6 on your keyboard, you should have this symbol that looks like a... Um, an upside down V, like this, it's called a hat. I want you to type the hat and then press the number two. That'll give you an index. Do you see that? X squared, right? Then let's do plus one. That's X squared plus one, do you see it? Yeah? What's the inverse function of this gonna look like, if there is an inverse? I wanna swap the X's and Y's, right? So down here, instead of y equals, I've got x equals y squared plus 1. Now, what's going on here, right? If you still get your straight lines there, your purple and your orange, your original and your inverse, they're clearly related in an important way. Okay? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn your head. I mean, I want to turn the TV, but it's a bit heavy for me. I want you to turn your head 45 degrees to the right, clockwise. Just turn it that way. And to help you, I'm going to put an extra line on now. Do you see what you've got? What you've got is actually a reflection of one graph onto the other one. Now, this is just the beginning. We're going to dig further into what this means and how to work with it on Thursday.